Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom or Tom. How's it going? Tony just finished recording a show on Thursday afternoon, the Friday morning show with our good buddy Alec Fleitman. Going to be a great show talking about Ohio State's quarterback recruiting for 2023, and they've got a couple targets in there and where things stand with them. I think, Tony, I think it's going to be the biggest show, most interesting show, most talked about topic on the Ohio State uh, message boards and community uh, for the rest of the week. Now, uh, let me just uh, take a nice, a nice sip of this piping hot cup of coffee and check Twitter one more time. Yeah, Tom, I didn't hear a thing you just said because all I can think about is the report from John Wilner at, at uh, Wilner Hotline that USC and UCLA are coming to the Big Ten uh, probably in 2024. So that's the big news. That's why we're here today. That's why we're discussing this. That is why, Tom, we went live Thursday to discuss it. Um, my connection, not the best. I got booted a couple times. I can, I can take a hint when I'm not wanted. And so I just left. And you and Kevin took care of it. I assume I don't care. I don't even want to talk about it. it the, the best part of doing a podcast is we can get to the podcast twice. Uh, and, it, you know, it's fine. We got we got uh, we have a little more information now than we did when we started doing the live show. And, uh, you know, plus, I don't want to say that the best part of the podcast is now Kevin's not here because that would be that's something you would you would say. I would not be so hurtful as to say that. So now that I've said it out loud, you don't have to say it. So just, you know, we, we appreciate Kevin and everything he does. But, uh, you know. As you say so many times, the Kevin episodes are not canon. And it's like, I mean, that's tough, but I, I understand where you're coming from. You say I don't want to say these things. You are so wrong. I do want to say them. And I get angry when you keep me from saying them because you say them. And I don't want this show to be a repeat. You've already done that. Um, but yes, uh, this is something that we have talked about on this show many times over the last year or two about mostly about USC. And so when you see that, that's not a surprise. And then I guess it's kind of a surprise just because it's actually like, oh, it's actually happening. Um, it's not been finalized yet, so it's not, not happening. But you know, now you have uh, the LA Times confirming it. You have the Athletic confirming it. So um, these are all things. It, it's all seemingly in motion. Big 10 ADs, I saw um, Nicole Arbach tweeting that the, they had a late night meeting or something and has gone into today. And so she kind of assumed something was up with that. Uh, and yep, there was. And now I, as I said on the, the stream time, I think this may be a, an explanation as to why the TV deal, the big 10 TV deal is a month late. You've got a couple more players involved now. Um, I'm wondering though, does it just stop at, Two, because I just saw another report um, where Nicole Auerbach tweeted saying that she talked to somebody and they think the Big Ten and the SEC are going to go into the 20s uh, in terms of teams. That's something we've talked about. Um, I mentioned it maybe last month about I myself have devised two 24 team conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC. And with the amount of money that is going to be made by those two conferences, it's going to be difficult for other conferences to keep up. But how large can these conferences get and still like they're going to make $90 million next year per team. But if you add in 20 more teams or eight more teams, it's not going to stay at $90 million a team. The money's going to come down. So you have to find this happy medium where, yeah, we've got all of these teams and now they're still making more money than, than they were because Tom, Ohio state doesn't want to make what they make like 75, 80 million this year. And then make that same with the new TV deal. It's like, oh, we've got all of these new teams. And it's like, yeah, but now I'm making the same. And that's not the way deals are supposed to go. Yeah, Tony, as you may have heard, uh, gasoline costs a little more than it did a year ago. A uh, loaf of bread costs a little more than it did a year ago. TV rights also going to cost a little more than it did a year ago. That's the, uh, that, that it seems to be the way of the world these days. Uh, it, it is, it's going to be so interesting to see when some of this stuff happens. Because it feels, it's starting to feel like all the stuff that we have sort of talked about in terms of, you know, 20 something team, you know, power conferences and a power two and all that kind of stuff. You can sort of see it starting to take shape right now. And I would have six hours ago, I would have bet that that, pro you know, that happens, but that happens 
10 years out, 15 years out. I think what maybe is happening right now is you're starting to see that time horizon get a lot shorter, where the stuff that we've sort of been talking about for a long time, I think it's still going to happen. I'm starting to think it might happen a little sooner. And we can get into all sorts of timetables and that kind of stuff, because there's a bunch of short-term timetables in terms of when UCLA and USC could join the Big Ten. Wilner floated the idea of 2024, which makes a lot of sense because of TV contracts, and we can go and we can go into that. You can, uh, Tony. I can talk about all of this stuff. You tell me which what part would you like to talk about first? Because there's there are about 17 different things here, and I think they are all absolutely fascinating. Well, and the thing is, with this bit of movement and Oklahoma and te- and uh, Texas going to the SEC, is this the time where it's like, well, let's just do all of it. You know, it, let's just while we're you know, we're, you're gonna let's just take out the the wall this this wall and just put may, add on and then if we're gonna be doing that let's just go ahead and repave the driveway and just get it all out of the way, or do you do something where you're like you know what let's not go for a ten year TV deal let's go for a five year deal, and allow things to settle a bit but also things are changing in terms of you know carriages and and streaming rights and all these things so. I don't know that you want to go too far out because things are changing. So, you know, you sign this, I don't know, five, six year deal or whatever. And, and then after about three or four years, that's when you start getting into more. Okay. Now, now what do we do? Do we want to go to 18 teams? Do we, is it time to go to 24 or 20 or, or whatever? And so I, I'm, in, I'm just interested. I think once we see the length of this TV deal, we will know a lot more if we don't already know more by the time that deal comes out. I, I'm not sure which is going to come first. The fact that, oh, also, you know, Colorado and Utah are jumping on, or or some, or I saw a mention of like West Virginia and Notre Dame to the ACC, something like that. Like when the dominoes start falling, some of it is accurate. Other uh, other pieces of it are accurate, and then they change. Like when. Texas was going to go to the Pac-12 back in 2016, 2017. Texas to the Big Ten. Uh, there were, there was all kinds of stuff going on at that time, and, and it never happened, even though you would have sworn, like, oh, this is definitely happening. So I'm interested to see what gets talked about. That's fun. And then what actually happens, and then the length of this TV thing. But just the, the speculation alone keeps us on our toes. And, you know, the timetables on this stuff, with those TV contracts, it, it feels like the entire conversation is being driven by TV contracts. The reason you're having this contact, this this conversation right now, and the reason uh, that they're looking at 2024 as the year they would jump is because of something a concept called grant of rights. That's something that's in each TV, conference's TV contract, and it's essentially it's like a blood pact among the people in the conference. And it's you know we're all signing our names on this contract, and this is you know this is our new TV deal, and it's great. And then you know, and then the, uh, the the attorney comes in and says, yes, but there's a catch. There's a grant of rights. And here's what the grant of rights says. It says, as long as this TV deal is in effect, you are, your conference, your TV rights, your, the money you earn as a school for your TV rights goes to the conference. And then the conference will distribute it to members. Well, if you are UC, USC and UCLA and you leave in the middle of a TV contract, if they decided this is completely impractical and you can't do it, but if they decided this year, We're just going to leave and we're going to play a Big Ten schedule this year. Well, then all the TV rights that are earned for USC and UCLA home games go to the Pac-12 because the Pac-12 has that grant of rights. And then do you think the Pac-12 is going to distribute those rights to USC and UCLA? I suspect that they would not. So therefore, uh, USC and UCLA, they're going to stick around for 2022. They're going to stick around for 2023. In 2024, the Pac-12 TV contract is up. So then the grant of rights goes away. And the 2024 season, those teams play in uh, the Big Ten. That's that's sort of the when and the why of behind that. The, where the bigger picture conversation comes in is okay, you know, you were talking about how long is the Big Ten's next TV deal? How long is the Pac-12's next TV deal? Can you get Pac-12 teams that, to be willing to sign a six, eight, ten-year TV deal? Are they going to want to? I mean, you're the timing of these TV deals coming up is everything's kind of going up, but also, I mean, the economy, I'm probably not breaking any news here. The economy is not in tremendous shape right now. And there's people are forecasting potential recessions and that kind of stuff coming. And 
if that happens, what does that do to the advertising market? And then what does that do to the value of the TV contracts? And does that impact the TV contracts? And if it lowers the value of, a, you know, the over the air kind of TV contract, does that impact, you know, a streaming deal? You just, uh, MLS just signed a, TV, a streaming TV deal with Apple TV. And you've heard, the big, you know, the Big Ten talked about as, you know, it's definitely Fox. And then who else is going to be with the Big Ten for their TV contract? And then will there be some kind of a, you know, the Thursday night game, uh, you know, the equivalent of the NFL Thursday night package, will that go to, you know, will, fr will Apple TV get a Friday night Big Ten game or will Amazon get a Friday night Big Ten game? That's, that's something that has at least been bandied about. But are people going to, you know, do the streaming equivalent of cord cutting if budgets get a little tight in households? These are all things that are going to factor into what the Big Ten's next TV contract looks like. With the Pac-12, will they be able, you know, if they're going to, they're, they're not going to get what they got, you know, in the last contract because you just lost two major brands. And, you know, Oregon State football and Wazoo and Cal don't really move the needle in terms of advertising and in terms of TV ratings. So you're probably looking at a smaller deal. The Big 12 is potentially looking at a smaller deal than they got before. Meanwhile, the Big 10 and the SEC are about to just explode in rights, uh, rights fees per year. You know, we, we were talking $90 million a year. You add USC, you add UCLA, are we talking $100 million a year? I mean, that's, that's I mean, th then you're in, the, these two con conferences are so far ahead of everyone else that no one else can possibly compete. So then, what does the Pac-12 do? What is the you know does the Pac-12 and the big the Pac-12 and the Big 12 are both kind of in limbo right now? And then you've got the ACC, whose TV contract runs through 2035, I believe. So there are all these different timetables. Does the I I, I had kind of thought before 2035 when that ACC TV deal, TV deal expired. That's probably about when the next Pac-12 deal expires, give or take a few years. That's when I thought you might see this kind of the whole college football world blowing up and, you know, 20 team conferences and all kind of stuff. If you if you want to strip the spare parts, you want to, you know, you strip the copper wire out of the Pac-12's house. You could do it now. I mean, you, you add USC, you add UCLA, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Colorado. I mean, th these are all teams that you could you could have uh, an interest in uh, as the Big Ten. And we need to go into the AAU at some point, too. There's. <laughs> There, there is a lot to talk about here, Tony. I think that's my, uh, I think that's my takeaway. There's a lot to talk about. Well, I think if the Big Ten is talking about expanding too much, you're going to have to make do with the AAU not being a part of it. You know, they haven't, they haven't booted Nebraska. I don't know if Nebraska is back in the AAU yet or not. They were when they joined, then they lost it. Um, so I don't know if they need to stick to that as much as they have if they're looking to add all of these. If the, in fact they are looking at adding all of these different schools, the the SEC contract, which starts in twenty twenty four, will be a ten year deal with ESPN. The Big Twelve contract ends after the twenty twenty four season, so like essentially those programs become free agents, and you can maybe strike some deals if you wanted them to come in. A little bit earlier, the, the SEC is having trouble with that in terms of getting Texas and Oklahoma to join earlier. The Big 12 is kind of sticking to their guns there. Um, the the issue with adding, say, Oregon, Washington, something like that, I wonder how much of, a, of an issue it would be with, we don't want Oregon State, we don't want Washington State, and will the, the state governments even allow that? And so I, I don't know that, that's ever really necessarily been talked about because Oregon has been talked about as going to the Big Ten in the past. We've discussed it. Other people have speculated on it. But I don't know how t tied they are to Oregon State and, and how tied Washington would be. Like, you know, you've got Colorado, boom. You know, that that's easy. Utah is easy. Um, but, you know, I, those are interesting markets for sure. Uh, closer to Nebraska than, say, uh, old Washington or something like that. Th there's, I don't want to say no telling, but there are just so many different ways this can go and still some wheeling and dealing going on that can change at any moment to where one day it's going to be these four because these two and then these two, and then the next day it's like, well, no, those two are out now. Now now it's these two. And it's, I think there, I, I wonder how much elbow fighting there's going to be 
how much um, just I wonder how much UCLA and U- USC kept this quiet like Oklahoma and Texas did. They didn't say nothing to anybody, and the Big 12 was caught completely off guard. I wonder how much this has caught the Pac-12 off guard, and it certainly caught the Big 12 off guard, or else they never would have added four teams from the AAC when they could have instead had Arizona schools or um, Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, stuff like that. Now, they could still, if they're going to go from 14 to 16, there's still a couple of schools they can add, but um, it will be interesting who who pulls from where. The Big Big 12 and the Pac-12 are going to have maybe a little tug of war between the top programs in terms of we want, the Pac-12 wants the two best remaining or four best Big 12 teams. The Big 12 is looking to add like the two best Pac-12 teams in this fight for survival and this piece of the pie but in terms of the big 10 like the the more inventory you can get the more you can spread out your broadcast and your television partners and then you have that friday night amazon game which is going to pay you you know 800 million or whatever then you can have you've got enough for for fox you've got enough for btn you've got enough for cbs who i know they're trying to work something out You've got NBC wants to get involved. You know, it's you've got a, a Notre Dame lead in for your Big Ten, you know, night game or whatever, which would be a pretty big, you know, that that's not a bad lead in for you. And uh, and and all of this, there's just so many different ways it can go, and it's it means more football. So I I think that's good. Um, and and I you know the curtain the some people will complain that. You're making all of these California athletes go to, you know, Maryland or whatever. It's not going to happen all the time. And these people travel pretty well, uh, at least the football teams do. I don't know what it means for women's soccer and, you know, things like that. But, it, you know, none of that travel is necessarily fun anyway. But overall, for the Big Ten, it's it's more inventory. And then I'm just I'm wondering – where it stops and, and how many, where else do you go? Is there anything, anybody from the big 12 that you'd rather go get, you know, is there anything left there to pick up? If looking at the big 12 and, you know, if you're looking at this in terms of a uh, football decision, you are going to roll your eyes at this, but looking at it in terms of an overall, you know, geographic fit and in terms of a, uh, you know, an academic fit, which is something that we'll, we'll get into in a minute, but University of Kansas is a very, very, very good basketball program. Very, very good. One of the best in the, pro, in the nation. And I know that doesn't move the needle the way that uh, football does. Basketball is kind of a second, you know, it's just, it, it's like a secondary concern, if that, in terms of these TV contracts. It just, it doesn't, people don't watch basketball. It's not appointment viewing in the way that football is. Um, one thing that Kansas has, and we need to, you mentioned AAU earlier, and I want to make sure that's something we've talked about on shows before, but I'm sure that this is probably not a foremost concern of most people. So let's just explain the AAU a little bit. This is not the AAU that does youth basketball. This is the Association of American Universities. And it's essentially a group of the most prestigious research universities in the country. And they all get together and they share funding and they share uh, you know, research and all that kind of stuff. It is, it is something that you do not, as a college football fan, care at all about. You know who does care about it? University presidents. Guess who gets to vote on who the new members of the conference are? University presidents. So guess what? You got to care about the Association of American Universities. So the, every Big Ten member, all 14 of the Big Ten members, uh, of the current members of the conference, were members of the AAU at the time they joined the Big Ten. You mentioned earlier, University of Nebraska lost their certification for the AAU that happened after they had already applied and been accepted to the Big Ten. And the reasoning, I'm going to give you a 30-second version of this, it has to do with the fact that the research hospital associated with the University of Nebraska is actually at the University of Nebraska Omaha and not the University of Nebraska Lincoln. So therefore, they didn't meet this one particular criteria in terms of having a research hospital available on their campus. So therefore, they were booted out of the out of the organization. It's not that, you know, suddenly it was a bad place to go to school or anything like that. That's just, it was just kind of a technicality thing. And so they are not currently a member. But I would I would be fairly surprised, given the fact that the Big Ten presidents are going to be the ones voting on this, if AAU membership was not kind of like, that's kind of like table stakes 
in terms of being a Big Ten member right now. Uh, USC and UCLA are both uh, AAU members. Uh, running through the list, I have this pulled up on Wikipedia because I'm extremely professional. Uh, here is just, I'm going to run through the list of Big 12, ACC, and Pac-12 schools who are AAU members. These are kind of, this is sort of, the, this is the menu for the Big Ten. The Big Ten, the Big Ten is, has tucked the tablecloth into, you know, Kevin Warren has tucked the tablecloth into his, his uh, shirt. He is ready to do some fine dining on, the, on those uh, other conferences. Um, so it is Duke, Georgia Tech, scrolling, 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 Stanford, Arizona, Cal, University of Cal, uh, California, Berkeley, Cal, UCLA, obviously, as we talked, talked about, uh, Chicago, if Chicago wants to come back in the Big Ten, I don't think they will, uh, University of Colorado, University of Kansas, so they are, they, are on this, on the, they are on the menu for the Big Ten, at least, whether they get picked or not, uh, University of Missouri, which uh, in the SEC, but uh, boy, looks like would be a really good fit in, you know, what could be the new Big Ten, but obviously they're not, they're, they're in the SEC. Uh, North Carolina, they are one that I would definitely keep an eye on. Oregon, Pitt in the ACC, USC, obviously, Utah, Virginia, Washington, and that's it. So those are kind of the schools that when we're talking about who might be next for the Big Ten, you know, people will say Iowa State, because look, they've been in-state rivalry with Iowa. Nope, not, not, nope. Kansas State, nope. Oklahoma State, nope. Like this is, this is, these are the table stakes to get into the Big Ten at, at this point, unless something really fundamentally changes, which I don't really see happening. Because again, the people who are making the decisions, this is the stuff they care about. Like the football is great and like more money is great and whatever, and that's fine. But the Big Ten, you know, the Big Ten is, can, can be a little stuffy at times, let's say. Uh, and, you know, that, that's, I, I would be very surprised if that changed as, sort of one of the basic criteria that a school has to fulfill if they're going to be a conference member. The latest as of 17 minutes ago saying an announcement could come today. So things are moving quickly for the Big Ten and USC and UCLA. I was sad to see that UCLA will join would join in uh, all sports except for beach volleyball, Tom. And I'm thinking, what? They're too good to play Big Ten beach volleyball? This is an outrage. I don't... Who do you think you are? I think there's, there's, you know, you're going to hear a lot of talk about football, obviously, because it's football. You're going to hear a lot of talk about men's basketball because it's men's basketball. I think the sport that's most interesting to me here is baseball and softball because those are sports where those are very Southern dominated sports. The Big Ten now has, you know, potentially a, a home in Southern California where you go down and you play a bunch of games in February and March. And, you know, maybe the Big Ten, the Big Ten is basically based out of Southern California for baseball and softball for the, you know, for, for future seasons. What does that do for the quality of the league? Because those are, those are two big time college baseball programs. UC, uh, UCLA at one point produced uh, Trevor Bauer and Garrett Cole. They were pitchers on the same UCLA pitching staff at one point. USC, uh, Rod Dado was the coach there for a million billion years. He had there was there was a point in the 1980s when Mark McGuire and Randy Johnson were on the USC baseball team. I mean, these are like big, big, big time college baseball programs. And I think you see USC has fallen off a little bit recently. I don't think they're you know national powerhouse anymore. But you know, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what moving to the Big Ten might do to USC baseball and UCLA baseball. It might drag them down a little bit, but it might bring the rest of the Big Ten uh, you know baseball and softball teams up. I'm pretty sure. UCLA was in the College World Series this year, Women's College World Series. So yeah, I mean those are those are I I think of all the of all the sports in Big Ten country, if you are a Big Ten baseball fan, this is a day that that might end up really changing some things about that sport. That's that's something I would kind of like to dig into uh, more in uh, the coming days. I remember when uh, COVID was going on and they were talking about. Well, just put the football teams in pods and, or, you know, and, and, um, or what was it? What, cocoon them or whatever. And, and just put them all in one area and let them play. And people are like, oh, you can't, this is college. These are college kids, college students. You can't just send them to another city to play and just be all, 
you know, wrapped up in each other. And it's, it, and it's like, but they do it in baseball. They do it in softball. Like the Ohio state baseball team in February lives almost in Florida so that they can play some baseball in some decent weather and they play a bunch there. So yeah, I could definitely see you going and doing a bubble type of thing out in LA for, you know, a couple of weeks and early big 10 baseball, you know, early conference or early conference slate or something like that. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be conference, but you've got a place that you can play. You've got a base to go. And, uh, it's, it becomes, maybe it becomes like Indianapolis is for the big 10 sort of for football and basketball. And that's, that's the new, uh, Indianapolis. People have said that LA is kind of the Indianapolis of the West. This would be a, another way to prove that, uh, as, as I've often said, the, the football aspect of it, Tom, for the Big Ten, uh, as I scroll through Twitter so far, I have seen uh, Wisconsin trending and Purdue trending, and people are like, you know, I can't wait to see USC or UCLA in Madison, you know, late November or something like that. Um, other people are saying, well, this gives Lincoln Riley two years to find a new job um, because he, he won't, you know, he's. He avoided the SEC. Now will he avoid the Big Ten? I think it's it's an easier sell and an easier slate, as we talked at the start of the show. It's easier for him to win it all in the Big Ten than the SEC, I think, um, especially if, if conference, uh, once playoff expansion comes. I'm just wondering at this point, if you add more teams beyond these two, do you go – do you go back to divisions? Do you go to more than, you know, two divisions? Do you go to four divisions, but the, the top two teams play in the, in a big 10 championship game, you know, something like that. What is the next step in terms of how you house all of these programs? We know they're looking at going away from divisions, but now do you come back to it? It feels like if you're going to stay at 16 and boy, that there are so many caveats that we need to apply here. Let's let's just predicate the, all of this conversation on the fact that they stay at 16. Well, then you have four pods of four teams, and that's that's about the easiest, cleanest way you could possibly do it. And so you're playing three other teams, and then you have 12 others in the conference that you're going to play. So you're going to play. I mean, you could play. You play the three other teams, and you, this is me doing mm, math on I the love fly it. in my head. You play. You play three other teams in your pod, and then you play six of the other 12 teams uh, every other year. And then you're going to, you know, and then in a four year span, you get a home and home with everyone else in the conference. So that, because you've got your three in your pod and then you've got four, three other pods of four. So that gives you 12. So you've got, there you go. That worked. There we go. Worked it out. Solved that. Solved the problem in my head. No paper necessary. Uh, that, that feels like the easiest, cleanest scheduling solution right now. But of course that's predicated on the fact that, there are only four, you know, these are the only additions and you stay at 16. Once you get bigger than 16, then, you know, then it's like, well, okay, you can add four more and get to 20 and then you've got five and then the math gets a little messier in terms of, uh, you know, how many, how many, uh, you know, you, you're not going to play 11 conference games a season. So that doesn't work. But, you know, I mean, you can, you can figure it out at that point. But it's going to be, it's going to be so interesting to see what the next step is because it feels like we're headed towards the two power conferences. And you were saying that other, other national college football reporters were hearing from people like basically I, I saw Matt Brown of the extra points newsletter, uh, Ohio state grad. Uh, he was saying that, you know, people he was talking to essentially, and I'm paraphrasing here, you know, that, that everyone sort of thought that the two power conference thing was where this was going to be headed. But now all of a sudden, maybe it's headed there a little sooner than everyone expected. You know, this this may be a sh you know a shorter hor time horizon before all of this is done. It's going to be so interesting to see what happens next because does the Pac-12 or does the does the Pac-12 implode? You know, because the Big Ten adds four more people and then the Pac-12 goes away. Does the you know do do they cannibalize just the Big 12 and the Pac-12 and then those two conferences kind of like make make one sad merger of whatever is left? And then, you know, it's not really a power conference anymore. Do the, uh, you know, what happens with the ACC? Because the ACC, the ACC is the one that all the teams in the ACC 
are right in the, you know, at least adjacent to either the Big Ten or SEC footprint. The ACC seems like that's going to be the conference that determines the future of college football. Are, is the ACC going to survive? Can the Big Ten, you know, it, it feels like the Big Ten and SEC could team up. I mean, if they really wanted to cannibalize the SEC and just divide things up. I mean, I went through the AAU schools earlier, North Carolina, Virginia, Georgia Tech, you know, the Big Ten takes those three. Let's just say the Big Ten takes those three. The SEC takes uh, Clemson and uh, Clemson and Florida State and Louisville or, you know, whoever. And um, so then at some point, you don't have a conference anymore. If, if those two t- conferences take six, eight teams, like at some point, the league stops being an entity, a, a functional entity. So you wonder how that might impact the, uh, you know, you wonder how that might impact, you know, the enforceability of the ACC's grant of rights, because that runs through 2035. What happens with Notre Dame? If the ACC goes away, what happens with Notre Dame? Does Notre Dame join the Big Ten? Does Notre Dame still try to be an independent in a world with two big power conferences? These are all, you know, great unanswerable questions right now, but it kind of feels like whenever we see, you know, we we have seen, you know, the the uh, you know, the the SEC uh, opened the game of chess and, you know, pushed their pawn forward two spaces by getting Oklahoma and uh, Texas and the Big Ten has answered by pushing their pawn forward and adding USC and UCLA. And it's like, all right, like now, now it's going to get interesting. Let's see what the SEC's response is or what the Big Ten's response is in terms of do they go after one conference? Do they go after multiple conferences? Because Big, Big 12 and, and uh, Pac-12, is, as we said, those, those TV contracts are up in just a couple of years. So those, are, those teams are essentially free game to add at that point. The ACC is the one that it feels like when we know what's happening with the ACC, that's going to tell me what the future of college football is. Yeah, and I think you said as uh, their their TV contract goes out to 2035. So you need to almost need, need to have a targeted attack by the Big Ten and the SEC. And I don't know that Kevin Warren is in a position to where he has been communicative enough or chummy enough with the SEC. If this is Jim Delaney, and Greg Sankey and, and Jim Delaney has an opportunity. This is the easiest way to get North Carolina into the Big Ten or something. And basically, you, you need subterfuge. You need a, a, an attack on the ACC. That way, there is, there is no conference to owe your, the grant of rights to. Now, do you, um, do they, does the ACC like try to remain, even if they're adding Arkansas State or whatever, like, no, we are still the ACC, so we will continue to take Notre Dame's money, because Notre Dame, I believe, has given them their grant of rights until 2035 as well, um, with with their little agreement, this football rights of some sort. I don't remember if that includes football rights or not. That's a, that's a interesting question, because I know I, there is something in that contract, and I have not read the contract in quite a while, but there was something in that contract where the Notre Dame, if they join a conference before 2035, they are contractually obligated to have that conference be the ACC. So unless the ACC blows up in the kind of scenario I was talking about earlier where, you know, eight different teams get poached or whatever, unless that happens, then Notre Dame is contractually obligated to join the ACC. When you look at what the ACC's TV contract is paying out compared to what the Big Ten's TV contract is paying out right now, I can't imagine that the that Notre Dame wants to join the ACC. So, you know, if, if we're talking uh, 2030, I think I would still bet on Notre Dame being independent as the most likely scenario. And, you know, the, the whole ACC exploding, you know, just going supernova and just splitting up into all these other different conferences and Notre Dame ending up in the Big Ten is probably the second most likely. I mean, I know there was a report that Notre Dame joining the ACC uh, was, you know, Notre Dame and West Virginia to the ACC, I think. I just, I can't make that make sense in my head that that's, you know, that's what Notre Dame is going to do. They're going to join the ACC and take, you know, this like third tier TV deal when they're used to being Notre Dame and being the big brand and the big everything. And, you know, if you go to the Big Ten, you're going to get, the fattest of TV checks. I just, I can't imagine them choosing the ACC, but I have been surprised before. Well, the deal they have now is 
fourth or fifth tier. Uh, now the the Notre Dame deal right now with NBC is fifteen million dollars a year, and that's just for the home games. That goes through twenty 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 five. Um, you know, so if they remain independent, they're go- they're not going to be ha- making as much as the ACC teams. So it may become a situation where you you got a new head coach, you you see this you see the horizon and you see the change coming and it's it's nice to be independent it's nicer to be relevant and to be in the championship hunt and Notre Dame was able to be in the hunt in the past but the way the money is moving if the Big 10 and the SEC are making 100 million dollars a year per team and Notre Dame's contract goes up a little bit to $25 million a year. Uh, that's still not good. Now they have their, their, their other contract. Uh, I, I don't even know what, what they get paid for for road games. I don't, I don't know that they do, but they, there's uh you know, the CFP and things like that where uh, they will get a little bit. It doesn't, it doesn't cross that bridge to get them to those other programs. And so I, I, I don't know how long they can do it. And then, you know, I, I've done this this spring, just building these two 24 team conferences and seeing who ends up where. You know, I have the North Carolina to the Big Ten, Notre Dame to the Big Ten West, with the with the Pac-12 essentially. I think that I think that's an okay fit. But um, what other ACC teams do I have in the Big Ten? Uh, um, you know, I, I think Maryland. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I think the, the ACC fits so well in the SEC with Clemson and Florida State and Miami. Those all just make really good sense, um, you know. But as I put these four, these eight divisions together, basically eight sixteen sixteen divisions, you're still I'm still left with with schools that have no homes, like Virginia, which doesn't seem likely, Syracuse, Boston College, Georgia Tech. Duke, unlikely, Colorado, Stanford, Utah, like Cal, West Virginia, as we talked about, may already be heading to the ACC. Who knows? Oklahoma State, Baylor. Like, there's still a lot of programs that would be left out of two 24 team super conferences, which is why there's enough for three super conferences. But marrying the ACC and the Big 12 and the Pac 12 it doesn't fit as well. Uh, these are not things that are like each other, but I, I also think the PAC 12 and the, and the big 12 to a lesser extent, the PAC 12 and the ACC have enough there to do something. I, Oh shoot. They're going to kick, they're going to kick the big 10 out of the Alliance, man. I, that, that was my first, res- my first reaction was, Oh man, this is, this is really going to screw up the ACC uh, PAC 12 big 10 scheduling Alliance. Yes. The the uh, the gentleman's agreement that was never written down on paper that we definitely took extremely seriously from day one because anytime you don't put a contract down on paper you know it's a good one that's a, that's that is the most serious of contracts because it is between gentlemen Tony that is how this works uh, it is I, I think at some point conference commissioners are going to start uh, looking at their uh, conference commissioner brethren with uh, a little bit of a jaundiced eye like hmm I wonder who's about to reach around and stab me in the back because. Probably someone feels like that's kind of how college sports is going right now. Yeah, I, I you can you can call those three super conferences, you know the, uh, you know the uh, SEC and the Big Ten, and then the uh, you know whatever they whatever they sew together from what's left of the ACC and Big Twelve and Pac twelve. But I mean, the, to your point, like they're not that's not a great cultural fit. Like Syracuse and Oregon State, what what would you say those two schools have in common other than exist in the United States of America. Boston College, Boston College and Boston College and Cal. Uh, I'm not sure those are great cultural fits together personally. Um it just and and whatever they're making in TV, you know, the leftovers of those conferences, like if if the SEC and the Big 10 have stripped all the copper wire out of of both of the, you know, all three of those good conferences or or those those current Power 5 conferences. And you've just got the here's what's left. I mean, let's just let's just say that the Big Ten is making a hundred and the SEC are making a hundred million dollars a school 
under whatever this TV contract is. We're just going to use $100 million as the baseline. W what is the leftovers conference making in terms of TV revenue? 30? I mean, that ACC and the Big 12 right now are kind of about 30, and you're losing the good schools out of there. So, I, I mean, we can, we can say 30, and it might not be 30. It might not quite be that much. At that point, like... You have three conferences. You don't have three super conferences. You've got two super conferences, and you've got, and here's the others. And, you know, and, and at that point, they're almost this level between the, pow the super conferences and the non-power conferences, the group of five type leagues like the AAC and the Sun Belt and the MAC and the Mountain West and CUSA. You're, you're you're not in the top group. You're not in the bottom group either because you're, you know, those leagues are more in the, you know, a few million dollars a, a year. You know, I think the MAC teams make a couple million bucks a year in TV deals. That's about it. So you're not making $2 million a year, but you're also not making 100 So at that point, I mean, at, at that point, the whole sport looks different because really it's probably, you know, what, what does the college football playoff look like at that point? Is it the... Uh, you know, there, it's a six-team playoff, and uh, the Big Ten and the SEC uh, each get their champions in, and then it's at large. But, I mean, a field of six of those teams, it might just be those those two conferences getting, you know, the six or eight or whatever playoff teams at that point. You are going to see, like, these programs from the outside clawing to get involved or, like, clawing for their lives, essentially. Now... It is also how you spend the money. I, I think I saw something a month or so ago about, you know, Ohio State makes so much more money than Clemson, but Clemson spends a little bit more money on football than Ohio State. Or, you know, Ohio State has 36, 37 varsity sports that they're spending money on that none of the SEC is worried about hockey or, you know, this or that. And so um, ACC is not necessarily worried about hockey. So you would just, they would have to, you know, put a larger percentage of their money to football and try to, um, close the gap somehow there. I think, you know, it, it's not a super conference, but there, there's enough in the ACC provided you act quickly where you, you know, you have some name brand programs, but yeah, it, it's just marrying them with the other name brand programs. Cause I don't know that there's necessarily anything in the big 12 that moves any kind of needle. Um, and, and I'm trying to talk myself into Colorado can move the needle, but that, you know, we're a, a product of the eighties and nineties. So it only moves the needle for us. And only if, um, you know, they're running the nineties the Colorado offense, but it, it's, you're going to have to convince some people that it's worth spending. And then if it is, if they, if they get a deal with, you know, $50 million a team or whatever, that, that eventually is that enough? It's, it's more than they've been making, so it should be enough, right? Like, there are only so many players to go around. You know, you the, the SEC and the Big Ten can't get them all every year, and the Big Ten actively does not go and get them. So I think $50 million spent the way the ACC would spend it equates to $100 million the way a lot of the Big Ten would spend it. Like, who are we talking about in the Big Ten that become national title contenders in this you know, with all this money, does it, does it change? Is it, it just USC, Ohio State? I mean, if you want to throw Michigan and Penn State in there, th does anybody else get added to that? Do they do anything with their money to turn themselves into national title contenders? What's going to be fascinating is to see how they spend their money. Does, does Illinois spend their money on renovating Memorial Stadium and trying to turn that into a real showplace of college football? Or do they say, you know, we're just going to stink at football, and that's okay, because we made friends with these people 100 years ago, so they're not going to kick us out. We're going to get good at basketball, and you sink all your money into basketball. And I, I don't know that Illinois fans would have a problem with that. Maybe, maybe Indiana becomes more relevant if they, you know, they've spent a ton of money on football, and they saw some progress and some, you know, some uh, improvement there, but they kind of, they had a bad year last year, and we'll see how sustainable that is under Tom Allen. I wonder about you know, it, it doesn't feel like you're going to, you're, you know, Purdue is suddenly going to be a national title contender just because they're getting more TV money. Like they, they'll probably spend the money on basketball and whatever, and that's fine. And I, it's going to be a better overall conference in terms of athletic programs, probably. I think that's probably a pretty safe bet. 
But I don't know that, yeah, outside, outside of USC, who you're adding, uh, they're, they're a new t- national title contender. But other than that, I don't think you're really, you know, it, it, it potentially is a more difficult, uh, difficult conference, potentially, depending on how, how this all breaks down. You mentioned Colorado earlier, and I wanted to touch on them because they, they're a really interesting case. Because you look at them, they are an AAU member, as is Kansas. Um, as is Utah, as is uh, Oregon, Washington, a lot of these schools that we're talking about. If you add, uh, you know, if you add Colorado, I think the argument for Colorado is Denver, that Denver metro area is growing in incredibly fast. And a lot of the Big Ten footprint has seen population shrink it. You know, the, sh- the population has shrunk over the years uh, as, you know, the sort of the Rust Belt, uh, you know, cities have gotten a little smaller and a lot of people have gone towards the south. Colorado has grown in terms of population. It's not necessarily grown in terms, it hasn't, you know, that hasn't manifested itself in like incredible high school football. And it's not, you know, it's not turning into Georgia in high school football or anything, but it's a growing area. And, you know, if you were betting on 30 years from now, maybe, maybe Denver is one of the biggest cities in the country. And then, you know, that's something that you need to talk about. The other, you know, the other conversation is how much do other sports fit in here? Do, do you add, if you're going to add a North Carolina, I mean, let's, I mean, we, go through the ACC teams. Virginia, North Carolina, Duke, those are three pretty darn good basketball programs. Do you want to add, if you're already adding North Carolina and Virginia or North Carolina and Duke or whatever, whatever you're going to do, and then you're going to, you know, you're going to add them and you've got your football is driving the bus here. Basketball is not the deciding factor here. But if you add a North Carolina, do you also add a Kansas? Because Kansas is an AAU member. It's geographically, you know, in the realm of Nebraska. So, you know, is that a team that you potentially are looking at at some point? Again, Kansas football is not going to move the needle, but do you do that for basketball purposes? And, you know, Kansas and Colorado are, I mean, I, I'm going to say right next door. And if you've ever driven across Kansas, you know, uh, next door is quite, quite a long way away to Colorado uh, from Lawrence, Kansas. But it is, uh, you know, th- those are neighboring states and Kansas is in the neighborhood of Nebraska. And so, you know, is that something you do? So there's there's going to be a lot that's going to be interesting to see about how this plays out, but it does. This feels like, uh, you know, a lot of those Pac-12 teams and a lot of those Big 12 teams right now have to be kind of looking around and going, you know, the the ship is sinking right now. You can kind of see the ship sinking, and maybe they can patch the ship, but if someone comes up in a lifeboat, they are going to get into that lifeboat. There there is not going to be a question that, uh, you know, if the if uh, you know Oregon is. If Oregon is not in the Big Ten in 10 years, it's not going to be because Oregon decided not to go to the Big Ten. It's going to be because the Big Ten passed on Oregon. Uh, looking at uh, John Wilner from five minutes ago, listening to the show that we haven't even dropped yet. Uh, source, USC, UCLA could top $100 million annually in media rights in the Big Ten. So uh, thank you for listening. Pete Thamel, 45 minutes ago. Uh, it's a formality. Uh, press conference expected in the next 24 hours, perhaps as soon as tonight. If this was bad news, it would all drop at like 5.30 on a Friday. Uh, this is not the kind of Friday news drop that uh, is a bad thing, so maybe they get it done today. Um, you know, we, we will be, uh, obviously, we're all going to be paying attention, looking to see exactly what this all means. And I think what I want to know most is, is, is it done? Is, are we, in terms of, is this 16 teams? That's where we are, and, and we're not doing anything else. But even then... Can you can you believe them necessarily? Because there's still a lot that can happen. And I go back to the original part of the original agreement with the alliance was that they agreed not to poach programs from each other. Like we're not going to be you know with all of this expansion going on, we're not going to be taking teams from you know schools from each other. Uh, clearly, that's not the case. And and the big the Big Ten will be like, well, they came to us. They came on to us, and we you know. What are we supposed to do? Say no? Um, and so, uh, and that's not an argument that ever works, but I assume. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm i interested to see what the Big Ten has to say when all of this became, you know, it came became real today. But, like, how long has this been going on? Because, as I said, we've talked about this for over a year, you know, hearing things. And so, um, yeah, it's finally here, Tom. Let's celebrate. It, it is finally here. And, you know, we've talked about all these different angles to this. And I, I still have, I have just been on like 
making a list on my phone of like, oh, we can't, we can't forget to talk about this. And you, you talked earlier about state politics and, you know, the, well, will, if Oregon leaves, will Oregon state, you know, will Oregon state allow Oregon to leave or the Oregon state legislature allow Oregon to leave without Oregon state? That was always the conversation. I mean, the, the uh, Southwest Conference, when the Southwest Conference blew up, uh, you know, and there were only certain teams that joined the Big Eight, uh, you know, Baylor got into the Big, Big 12 because Ann Richards, the governor of Texas then, was a Baylor grad. So it was just kind of like, well, you want to do this? That's fine. You got to take Baylor. And some teams get in and some teams get out. There was always the, the conversation around Oklahoma and Oklahoma State joining the Big Ten at one point when, when it was like Oklahoma and Texas might join the Big Ten several years ago. There was always this idea that, well, the Oklahoma State legislature would never let you take one without the other. And Oklahoma State's not a AAU member. And so you can't you know, so this is a non-starter. Well, Oklahoma joined the in the joined the SEC, and uh, no one has stopped that from happening. So I do I think that might be a little bit, um, you know, maybe not quite as much of a deal breaker as uh, as you might have thought before. Uh, one other thing: recruiting in California. What is this going to do? Like oh, Nebraska died. One of the reasons Nebraska has died is because they've lost access to the Texas pipeline that they had been re- relying on. Well, now, what does this do for recruiting in California? California is not the high school football state that it used to be. They're, they have seen a drop in participation in high school football in California. That's not really where you're going to get your 300-pound space-eating defensive linemen. But Ohio State has gotten some pretty darn good skill position players out of ca- the state of California recently. And, you know, they did get Wyatt Davis out of California and, uh, you know, C.J. Stroud and Chris Olave and all those kind of guys. What does this do for a program like Nebraska, who is, des- you know, it does not have a lot of talent in their state? If, you know, it, let's just say it's 16 and the pods are UCLA and USC, and you just pick the states that are furthest west or the furthest southwest, and then that's Nebraska and Iowa. First of all, how thrilled are the UCLA fill-in-the-blank team going to be to travel to Iowa City and Lincoln in January for their gymnastics meet or their uh, their uh, you know, basketball game or whatever it ends up being? But, you know, the teams, if they do go to a pod system and you are playing at USC, at UCLA every year you know, every other year in, in, in football and basketball, all that kind of stuff, what does that do for recruiting for Nebraska? Nebraska that Nebraska seems like potentially, potentially, this is this is, you know, I'm 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 going seven to seven steps down the road here because we don't know anything about scheduling and, and conference arrangement and is this all done and all that kind of stuff. But potentially, does this open up California recruiting for Nebraska in a way that they kind of leaned on Texas in the past? Maybe this is something that's good news for Nebraska. 10 years down the road. Yeah. ESPN's Adam Rittenberg, who was also listening to the show that we have not yet dropped, talked to a power five coach about Notre Dame. The coach said they're going to have to go somewhere. Uh, so this is all, um, honestly, the, the massive expansion that we're talking about is going to do more to change the sport than all of the NIL stuff that combined basically like, uh, I think there is some reason to be concerned that you may just essentially end up with a Fox conference and an ESPN conference, but you know, it, it, it they will eventually settle it on the field. And this was a sport for a hundred years that didn't settle it on the field. So, um, you know, it, it's something where you just, you adjust and you enjoy the games while they're going on and you enjoy talking about them before they happen. And then you, we've got this constant hot stove, that we all love. And I almost feel like we should wrap up the show before something happens to change everything that we've been talking about. And also it allows us to go ahead and post this before anything else changes. Uh, Tom, anything else before we, uh, anything else you want to throw in? No, I think, I think we're good for now. I have a feeling we're probably going to do another show on this tomorrow. And uh, cause it, there will be new information and um, please enjoy Friday's morning scoop about college or quarterback recruiting. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we have to go in and add a uh, little, uh, hey, um, we recorded this before. Yeah, we'll make, make it a little uh, disclaimer at the beginning. Like, don't worry, we, we, we're not crazy. We actually are aware that there's other news going on. But uh, yeah, we, there may be, I, it feels like there is going to be significant news coming again soon. And man, this is, 
I, I feel like I've said this a hundred times this year between recruiting and, uh, you know, conference expansion and NIL and all that stuff. Like there is no college football off season. It is the sport with the longest off season in, in all of North American sports. And also there's no off season. I, I, it is, it is wild. What a time to be alive. Well, and Tom, just, I've tried to tell you, you know, this isn't the first time where you've had a morning show where, you know, you wish you could have talked about something else, but you've pre-recorded. I really think if you were dedicated enough, you would do these actually live. Um, no, you would not get any guests, but, um, you know, if you want to get up at, you know, say five in the morning, every morning and just talk to yourself, like, I think the dedication, just think about it. I'm not saying, uh, that you have to do it every day, but Monday through Friday, it would be nice if it's like the actual news that happened the night before, rather than the news that happened the day before, you know, or the morning before. I have, uh, I have kids. I'm up pretty early most mornings anyway. So it's really, it's really a guest issue more than anything else. I'm around, but, uh, I, I really have to question the dedication of literally everyone else. That's, that's my, uh, that's my concern. But it is funny because we have agreed to, uh, start recording tomorrow at like 8 a.m. And, uh, whew, that's, that's early for me. So, um, but tomorrow, now I'm just realizing as we talk about this on, on during the show, Tomorrow morning is going to be a long one, like, but we've got a, you know, we, we've got this thing figured out. We, I'm just wondering if we're going to have to shift some stuff after we hear what else we're going to hear from wh- whomever today. See what Kevin Warren has to say or, or the, uh, the, the USC and UCLA ADs, or if, uh, Klyovkov, the PAC 12 commissioner comes out and, you know, personal attack or, you know, drops a diss track or something like that. And we have to address that. Uh, again, it's all in good fun. It, there's no off season, so we're here for it. That will do it then. I don't know for how long it will do it, but uh, there will be obviously more coming. I uh, also want to thank you for tuning in. As mentioned, check out Tom Morning Scoop tomorrow. Talking to Alex about not about this, but it is what it is. I believe uh, Kevin Noon is is dropping uh, is has done Big Me Kickoff recently and also has his own YouTube channel that you want to check out. He's talking about. I think he might be talking about this as well. Um, Mark Gibbler, Bill Green, Gives in the Bank, have their recruiting podcast. Alex Gleitman just dropped a, an Around the Oval podcast. I believe looking at the, predicting the 2023, the, the way the 2023 class is going to wrap up. I think that's right. So uh, give that give them all a, a listen. Check them out on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the chaos, and we will talk to you guys later. <laughs>